Hey, what's going on, guys? The Horror Man back ranking all six movies in the Jurassic Park franchise. First of all, happy Labor Day, everyone. Yesterday, Jason and I discussed Jurassic Park during Bravo's Scariest Movie Moments Challenge. It had been a long time since either of us had watched it, and after re-watching it, we realized how much we both love it. We were so excited, in fact, that we decided to watch the rest of the franchise and rank all six movies. Neither Jason nor I had seen all six films but we had seen most of them at least once. It had been years, though, since we had re-watched them, like the original. Now, as of the filming of this video, the seventh movie in the franchise is in production and is due out on July 2nd of next year. With that in mind, it turns out this is the perfect time to rank the franchise. Like with all of my other rankings, I will start with my least favorite and work my way to my favorite Jurassic Park film. I base my decisions on criteria such as nostalgia, rewatchability, and overall enjoyment. You don't have to agree or even understand. It's just my personal opinion. And Jason is ranking the franchise as well. So please be sure to check out his video to see how his ranking compares to mine. By the way, I want to point out, because physical media matters, this here is my Franchise Collection Adventure Pack. And it opens up like this. Pretty cool. I will also be showing various formats of physical media in this video. VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K. So... Here we go. This is Jurassic Park Ranked. In last place, I unfortunately have to go with The Lost World Jurassic Park, which is the first sequel and second movie in the franchise, also directed by Steven Spielberg, who of course helmed the original. With The Lost World, he sort of did what Toby Hooper did in TCM2, only the reverse. The original Jurassic Park, as gruesome and horrific as it is at times, had a much lighter tone. The Lost World is much darker. I do really like the cast. I'm glad Jeff Goldblum reprised his role as Dr. Ian e. Malcolm in this sequel. We also get Julianne Moore, who plays his girlfriend. Vince Vaughn, who I had completely forgotten was in this. That's how long it had been since I had seen it. And Richard Schiff, who played Toby Ziegler in The West Wing. My favorite part of The Lost World is the third act, when the T-Rex escapes and terrorizes San Diego. I especially like when she's walking around the suburban neighborhood. I almost wish more of the movie took place in that setting. If so, it may have ranked higher. But for now, it's in last place in my Jurassic Park ranking. Coming in at number five is the fifth film in the franchise, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I thought this was a great follow-up to Jurassic World, and in a lot of ways, it's similar to The Lost World Jurassic Park. Obviously, I do prefer this sequel, since I have it a spot higher, but they are similar. I like the chemistry between Owen and Claire, played by Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, respectively in these Jurassic World movies. I also love Blue, the good Velociraptor. It was pretty cool seeing what became of Jurassic World after the end of the previous film. Fallen Kingdom is a fitting title. The mansion setting is awesome, and I love the museum. It was also great to see Jeff Goldblum show up in this one as well. Fallen Kingdom has an awesome ending and an awesome end credit scene. Despite all of this, I still like the others more. So Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom comes in at number 5. Jurassic World Dominion, or Jurassic Park 6, comes in at number 4. This seems to be the film in the franchise most people have ranked last, but 
not me. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for the long runtime, I may have considered ranking this a spot higher. Maybe. Dominion has an approximate runtime of 2 hours and 27 minutes, making it the longest of all the Jurassic Park films. The extended cut runs 2 hours and 40 minutes. What I really love about this one, though, is the return of so many characters. Not only do we get Owen, Claire, and Maisie returning from the previous Jurassic World movies, but we also get Dr. Ian Malcolm, Dr. Alan Grant, and Dr. Ellie Sattler. Alan and Ellie, played by Sam Neill and Laura Dern, respectively, had not appeared in the franchise since Jurassic Park 3. They aren't the only characters to return either. The main villain in Jurassic World Dominion is someone from the original Jurassic Park. But I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen this yet. There are some fantastic callbacks to that first film, and Jurassic World Dominion is actually paced really well, despite its massive runtime. I know many others don't, but I like this one a lot, and it's number four in my ranking. Next up, I have Jurassic Park 3, at number three. While Dominion is in fact the longest in the franchise, Jurassic Park 3 is the shortest, by far. That short runtime definitely lends to the fast pace of this one. From the opening scene, this one had me hooked, and admittedly, I did not remember much about this movie at all. I will say though, I was really impressed with the sequel. Ironically, this is another one that gets a lot of criticism. Go figure. This one, as I already mentioned, gave us the return of Dr. Alan Grant and Dr. Ellie Sattler. Sam Neill and Laura Dern did not return for The Lost World, but came back in Jurassic Park 3. I love their dynamic in this one. It's both heartbreaking and touching. It's great to see more pterodactyl action in Jurassic Park 3. And truth be told, I like the storyline a lot, as simple as it is. It's the short runtime alone, though, that makes Jurassic Park 3 extremely rewatchable. Not to mention, it's highly entertaining. Because of all of that and more, Jurassic Park 3 is in third place. In second place, and to some extent it was close, I have Jurassic World, which is the fourth movie in the franchise. This film was the reboot, or requel, and it's funny to me that people now refer to this franchise as Jurassic World, rather than Jurassic Park. I wasn't even sure how to best title this video because of that distinction. But the franchise began with Jurassic Park, so I'm sticking with that. As for Jurassic World, what's special about this one is it returns something to the franchise that had been absent since the original Jurassic Park, and that is magic. There is a magical, wondrous feeling about Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. A lot of that has to do with the fact that they are the only two movies in the franchise that actually take place in the theme park. I also love that in Jurassic World, the park is finally open to the public. It was like watching the counselors prepare to open camp in Friday the 13th and then again in Friday the 13th Part 2 only for us to never see any campers. Then, obviously, in Jason Lives, they finally arrive. At least in Jurassic Park, we only had to wait until the fourth movie, instead of the sixth, like in Friday the 13th. Jurassic World takes what made Jurassic Park so successful and does it bigger and, in some ways, better. It's like we, as the audience, are part of the crowd in the theme park. Jurassic World also introduces us to Owen, played by Chris Pratt, and Claire, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, who would be with us for the following films. I have to say, I'm a bit curious about the movie coming out next year, since as of right now, they are not attached to Star. But this movie worked with a new cast, so I'm not too concerned. I love Jurassic World, and it very well could have been number one, but it's number two. 
Because my number one favorite movie in the Jurassic Park franchise is the original Jurassic Park. Like I said in the Bravo video yesterday, I consider this to be Steven Spielberg's masterpiece. I say that as someone who is not as huge of a Steven Spielberg fan as most others. But this right here, this is special. It has that magical, wondrous feeling. The score is absolutely amazing. Speaking of which, I've noticed that my top three are the movies that utilize the score most. My bottom three don't feature it nearly as much. So maybe that adds to that magic as well. I think it does. I love the characters in this, and the kills are gruesome. I didn't remember them being so horrific. It's funny how people try to say Jurassic Park is an adventure film. Yeah, it's a horror adventure. Would you want to be eaten by a T-Rex or torn apart by a raptor? I don't think so. I was actually left stunned by how much I loved Jurassic Park this time around when we watched it for the Bravo Challenge. As I mentioned earlier, it's what inspired Jason and me to watch the rest of these movies and rank them. Jurassic World would have been a worthy number one, but there's something that Jurassic Park offers that Jurassic World doesn't. And for me, that's nostalgia. I didn't know how nostalgic I was for Jurassic Park until I watched it this time. So yeah. As much as I love Jurassic World, Jurassic Park is my number one favorite movie in the franchise. So there you have it, guys. My ranking of all six movies in the Jurassic Park franchise. What do you think? How would you rank these films? Comment below and let me know. Of course, don't forget to check out Jason's video to see how he has Jurassic Park ranked. Which franchise will we rank next? Check back soon to find out. Until then, remember, physical media matters. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up and be kind. Subscribe.